I'm going to show you the reason that a lot of people make a mistake when they're doing the cam belt on these and they end up one tooth out. This is why. Now I know what you're thinking, Bryn, you don't do work for other people anymore. Well, I do little bits and bobs and Nick had contacted me about getting his clutch done mm -hmm. around the time that I stopped. So yeah, I'm going to do the clutch for him. We've got full LUK set up there. And because we noticed an oil leak around the sump area that wasn't resolved by doing the sump, we've got the main seal for the input shaft on the gearbox and we've also got the crank main seal um, do those while we're in there and then we've also got yeah like i say Haldex oil and filter and then we've got the ina cam belt and water pump kit with the tensioners um, the gates kit is no good anymore unfortunately so yeah um let's just get it all fitted oh yeah we love that boat it's all good for when it comes crashing down in your head. Uh, right, let's have a look under here. So this is what we were looking at. Obviously there may be a, a leak elsewhere coming down. But yeah, we want to make sure there's no leaks in there. Let's have a look. We've got crossover pipe that needs to come off. We're going to have to undo the power steering lines. But these side covers are going to have to come off. Subframes obviously got to come off. Obviously, the wheels are going to come off. Um, and then once all that's off, we've got the starter motors up there. Uh, we've got to undo the prop, and then we have to undo the drive shafts. Yes, yeah, so there's a there's a fair bit to do. Um, people get scared of dropping the subframe for some reason, and that really confuses me. Um, yes, it does affect the alignment, but you know if you're doing anything suspension related you really should get the alignment sorted afterwards anyway so uh yeah i don't know why it scares people because like i say you've got four big bolts four bolts of the subframe drop links ball joints dog bone there's a little mount you can't really see it from here so the p clip for the power steering line goes onto that anti-roll bar bracket that's awkward to get to that's probably the worst bit of the job um yeah so uh it's not that bad a job, I don't get why people whinge about it. They'll, they'll, people will do all sorts of things, especially when they're changing the downpipe, to just avoid taking the subframe off. And it's like, just make it easy for yourself, take the subframe off. I really don't get it. Cool, right, let's, um, yeah, let's do some more stripping down. See how bad this clutch actually is. Oh, it's all good fun, isn't it? Right, gearbox is off. There's the old clutch. So yeah, uh, if you want to see how to do it properly, I've got a guide. It took me a long time. It's about 45 minute detailed video on how to do that. Uh, it give you a proper idea of everything that's involved in that job, but it's a biggie, I promise you. So yeah, uh, whew, quick little rest, have a drink get refreshed and then rip the clutch off change the seal change the seal put it all back together happy days we've got some fresh seal on there Now there is definitely still a different oil leak to address, whether it's the rocker cover, I think it might be because it's sort of further around the back there. So yeah, definitely something else to address, but at least we'll know that this isn't leaking. That's on, don't come off, don't come off. Uh, 
There we go. I'm going to let you into a secret every single time I do this job. It's that part of the job that makes me question whether I ever want to do it again. That probably took five minutes, sometimes it can take 20. And believe me, the times it takes 20, I do not want to do it again. serviced as well. And the bit that everyone always gets worried about, easy peasy. It's the first thing you know when you see the name, and my daughter's always been called Cheese. So if he just to turn to change it to something like Montgomery, yeah. Uh, so at this point, we realise things might not go to plan. Glad I was filming, to be honest with you. Look at the state of those holes there. They. Oh, not ideal. I know for a fact that Audi were the last people that took this mount off because they were the last people that did the camber and there's no other reason to take the mount off. So yeah, um, let me show you the issue. Right in there, look, look how bad that thread is. That one's probably salvageable, although you can see that bit's moving there. Yeah, that's not ideal. Now I am, um, an hour's drive away from home. Uh, the customer have left me with the keys. They've gone away for the weekend. Um, I met them this morning while they were getting ready to go. Um, and I'm supposed to just be posting the keys when I'm done. I don't have a spare mount with me. I don't have a helicopter kit with me. Uh, mm, I'm gonna have to come up with a solution. Um, the problem is, is that to get that mount out with the camber all assembled isn't really uh, isn't really doable. So changing it whilst doing the cam belt is ideal timing wise if you're in a position to actually have the parts and change it. Um, so I'll probably strip this down, go away with the mount, come back, finish the job. <sighs> These things are sent to testers, aren't they? Looks like being a hoarder has paid off. I've got a spare mount. Woo, no helicoiling needed. So obviously it's the next day, time for me to carry on like nothing happened. There was never anything wrong with this mount. <laughs> yeah, this is the fresh mount from home. So yeah, happy days. Um, a lot of people actually spend ages trying to remove this mount and then refit this mount as part of the job. Um, but I'm gonna show you that it needs to just stay in place while you do the work. So in there, you can see the outline of where the hydraulic damper lives. That's where that would be. So all you're doing is you, as you're attaching it, you're working with the mount around. Because if you, to get it out, it has to come past there. So there's no room. If you come out the top, it's got to come past the water pump. It just doesn't work. It's got to come past the roller tensioner, which lives there. So you just leave the mount there like that. And then you, you bolt this in place. And it's really not that difficult. And once this is bolted in place, you put this up and round and you rest it there and you put, the water pump in and the, the roller tensioner and then the mount is just where it needs to be and the belt will slip past there. I'll try and show you but it is quite tricky to film because that's our viewing access. This is what I mean by working around the mount so I've done this top belt up this behind here but to get to this bolt the mount needs to be up there so then I can get onto that bolt. So yeah, trying to take the mat out is just pointless. Just leave it in place, work around it. It's not that big a deal. I'm gonna show you the reason that a lot of people make a mistake when they're doing the cam belt on these and they end up one tooth out. This is why. 
the cam relaxes. So when you take the belt off, you'll have that yellow mark in line with that notch on the cam cover. And then once it's off, the springs and the pressure, it retards the cam ever so slightly. So then if you just go and put the belt back on there, you're gonna to have to pick which way do you, you know, which way does it sit wrong, you know? And most people just sling it on and just hope for the best. And then it will sit a tooth wrong. So what you have to do is you have to move the crank back to meet that. And every single guide that you read says that you shouldn't turn the crank by hand backwards, but you have to, you just have to. You're only moving it a slight bit just to match what the cam has done already. So yeah, um, you only have to back it off ever so slightly, like I say, and it will line up. And I will uh, I will be doing a full guide on this uh, where I will remove stuff that I wouldn't normally remove as part of the job so that I can give you better access and viewing of what I'm doing because as you can tell, it's really not, yeah, very easy to see what I'm doing. So yeah, um, but yeah, I just thought I'd share that little tidbit of information with you. So now that I've done a couple of revolutions of the engine, everything lines up nicely. There you go. It's all good. So then we get to pull the pin, which is there. Now you can see in this position how is the engine mount supposed to be removed from there. You just can't. So uh, yeah, don't even try. Right. Well, you can. There is a way, but it's a right faff, and I don't want to go into it right now but it does involve removing other mounts. Oh, all right, time to put it all back together and then take it for a little test drive. Yeah, so Nick, I'm just taking the car for a test drive, like you asked, just to make sure everything's all right. Power-wise, everything feels fine. The brakes are a little bit lacking. Um, probably need to flush. I didn't really pay too much attention to the discs and pads. Um, but yeah, let's just turn around here. Tight turn. Ooh. And now I'm going to stuck with you on cyclists, but it is uh, bank holiday Sunday, so what do you expect? Oh no, they've tucked over for me, nice one. Thank you. But yeah, it's nice to be back in a Mark One. I must say. Uh, I will be getting my Mark 1 back on the road soon, guys. Uh, there'll be a whole series about, yeah, I mean, it's been sat on my driveway for about a year and a half, so just uh, getting it ready for use again. But yeah, I am enjoying the Mark 1s again. Um, whoa, just not necessarily enjoying this road. But if that's been interesting for you, then make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. Comment down below what jobs you've got to do on your TT at the moment. You know, what's your list looking like? Is it just a couple of little bits and bobs or is it a list as long as your arm? Let me know. I do read all the comments and I do respond where appropriate. So yeah, until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers guys.